Hi guys and welcome to the cockpit of the new Belsim Tech Tiger FIV and ECS. This is going to be a tutorial series including an introduction to the cockpit and aircraft systems in this video, followed by key setup, startup, taxi takeoff, weapons employment and landing tutorials. As you might not know, I had the pleasure to serve in the Swiss Air Force as weapon maintenance and mechanic on the Tiger Air 5 and I hope I can enrich these tutorials with some insight I gained during that time. So let's jump right to it. The cockpit is set up pretty simple and straightforward. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of all the panels from the left of the cockpit to the right and afterwards I will explain the most important systems a bit more detailed. Alright, on the left side of the cockpit we have our chaff and flare selectors, we have pitch and yaw damper, we have our radar control panel and our throttle quadrant and forward of that we have a small storage box for loose items like safety pins. On the upfront control panel we have engine start, we have our weapons control panel and above that we have our main flight instruments. To the left of that we have our gear handle and track shoot handle. Now in the middle of the cockpit we have our gun sight, we have the radar screen, UHF panel and TACON panel. Here we have our RWR screen and panel. We have our engine instruments and fuel switches and we have our environment control panel. Down here we have the electric panel and oxygen panel, also the emergency light panel, IFF panel and internal and external light panel. Behind that we have a map case for our paper maps and a little hand torch. We also have our canopy lever and here we have our backup compass. Now let me explain some of our systems a bit more in depth. First off the chaff and flare system, here we have the selector panel and here on the throttle we have the countermeasure deploy button. Every time we press the deploy button, whatever is chosen on this panel will be deployed once. We can have our chaff and flare in either single position or program position and our chaff selector we can put into mold position. I usually only use single position, so I have full control over how much flare or chaff I dispense every time. Our radar is controlled by the radar control panel back behind the throttle. Here we have the mode switch to turn our radar into standby or operational mode. We also have our range dial to turn our range of the radar from 5 to 10, 20 up to 40. We also have our acquisition button to lock our target. We can elevate our antenna up or down and we can also slew our cursor on the radar screen. These controls should all be set up on your hotel system. The flap controls in the Tiger have a pretty special setup. There is two flap handles. The one behind the throttle controls if the flaps are either fully up, fully down or controlled by the thumb switch. The thumb switch is located on the throttle and it has also three positions, either up, fixed or automatic. In automatic mode the flaps will be controlled by the flight computer depending on angle of attack, airspeed and altitude. You can always leave it in automatic and you never have to care about flaps. The fixed position is supposed to give you better fuel efficiency on long haul flights. The up position is again keeping the flaps all the way up. You also have a flap indicator which shows either up if they are up, down if they are down, or auto if they are automatically controlled by the flight computer. You also have a pitch trim indicator hidden below this board here, which is almost impossible to see without track IR. This is going to be important for the takeoff, where you have to set a pre takeoff pitch trim position between 6 and 9 degrees, depending on your load. Since the Tiger has quite small wings, it needs a lot of angle of attack when taking off. To counteract these problems, the Tiger has an incorporated nose strut extender, which when you press the button will extend your nose gear about 30 cm up. This will give you about 3 degrees more angle of attack on your takeoff roll. So our weapon panel is laid out in a pretty straightforward manner again. We have our master arm in the middle and we have our pylons laid out from left to right. So if you want to fire a weapon, we first turn on our master arm into the upwards position, downwards would be only for training. 
Then we select our store. If you want to fire aim nines, we can select both stores at the same time and it will only fire one. If you want to drop a bomb, we first have to choose uh, our nose or tail fuse. Normally nose fuse is fine. Then we select the store we want to drop from. And then we need to select either bomb or ripple mode for a multiple drop. And we also have to select the interval for our ripple mode. If you want to fire rockets, we have to select rocket dispense and the pylons where the rockets are located. Now, if we want to jettison one of our weapons, we first have to choose the according pylon. Then we go to the select jettison panel, put this switch into select position and push the according button. Don't forget to turn off your select position again and turn off the selected pylon. Otherwise, no weapons will fire after that. If you want to drop all your weapons, you first have to remove this yellow cap and then press the button below. This will drop all your weapons on the pylons except for the M9s on the wingtips. Now our gun sight has four different modes. Missile, AA-1 guns and AA-2 guns and manual. For locking on your M9s you want to use missile. For shooting down other aircraft you want to use either AA-1 or AA-2. And for ground attack you want to use manual. For ground attacks you can also set your manual reticle depression on this knob which will turn your reticle up or down. To turn on your radio you put this switch into main and then you can either select your frequency manually if you put this switch into manual or you can also use preset channels if you change the channels here. To use the TACAN you first have to select your channel by scrolling on these two knobs then you can right click on this one to choose between Y and X and then you put the switch into transmit receive. This will give you informations of direction and distance on your HSI. To turn on your radar warning receiver you first have to press this power button which will put it into a 30 seconds warm up. You also have different advanced display options but I'm not going to go into great detail here. Now fuel management is quite important on the Tiger. Here you have your boost pumps, cross feed and auto balance switches. Here you have your switches to activate either your wing external fuel tanks or your central line external fuel tanks below your fuselage. Up here you have your fuel quantity and your fuel flow. As you can see, your fuel quantity for the left and the right engine is not the same. That's because both of them are fed through different tanks and you need to care about this imbalance during the flight. First you will use up your external fuel though, starting with your wing pylons and then your center line pylon. You will only turn them on after takeoff when there is already a little bit space inside the internal fuel tanks though. After you used up all your external fuel, you need to start balancing out the two tanks. You do that by switching the auto balance switch into the left low if the left one has less fuel and then turning off the according boost pump, so the left one. Once these two are equalized, the auto balance switch will automatically turn off. You need to always monitor your fuel quantity on both engines so you can balance them out if need be. Now the last thing to cover is the lightning of the aircraft. Here we have our cockpit lights and our external lights. Now if you give ourselves some battery power and if we turn on our engine instruments we have emergency floodlights in the cockpit. They will turn off once we get generator power from starting up the engines. Now for our external lights we have a beacon. On our vertical stabilizer we turn that on before we start up the engines to warn the ground crew. Then we have formation lights just behind the cockpit and we also have navigation lights on our wings. We can turn them all the way to bright or into the flash position to make them flash. We also have our armament light control on this panel and our landing and taxi light here. Alright, thanks for watching this tutorial. Please like or dislike, comment and subscribe if you want to see the next tutorials on key setup, startup, takeoff, weapons employment and so on. Have a nice day.